Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reviewing some of the best games from NAC and we are actually going to start with what I consider to be the absolute best game from NAC5 and that is me against Tato arena game in the group stage. So obviously spoilers but you guys have probably already been spoiled uh, if you're on this video but I'm going to give you guys the context of the game and then I'll obviously showcase the game and I'll give you guys some of the behind the scenes what I was thinking and uh, kind of how I wanted to go about the game from my perspective, uh, which is, uh, I think, really cool. Since I played this game, I know a little bit more about, you know, just playing the game. I, I have some extra thought process on the background as well. So, guys, this is a really big game. Uh, it was group stage. I was down 2-1. Uh, so if I lost this game, I'm, I lose the, the set. And the set meant a lot because whoever wins this set is guaranteed to be in the top two of group stage, which means you secure a spot in the semifinals. Uh, obviously, there's one more round after this, but if you secure it now, you're in a good spot. So this had a lot of stakes as far as what was on the line. And also, it was uh, a, a group stage match that had like two top tier civs, especially Burgundians. Very, actually, Aztecs wasn't, but Burgundians was Tato's number one civ. I, I believe he picked it first. It was Aztecs was a bit more like third, fourth pick. So I was down bad. And I was playing against the number one Civ uh, on Arena, or one of them, uh, and Tato's first pick. So, a lot on the line, and it was an uphill battle for me. But we're going to go ahead and review the game, break it down for you guys to enjoy, and we can relive some of those uh, amazing memories from NEC 5. It's the last NEC, Sag. Uh, but I think, you know, especially the, the best games should live on on YouTube forever here. So, Astix versus Burgundians. Let's talk a little bit about the matchup here while both players develop. Um, and we have... Uh, full walls here from both of us, obviously, since it's arena. So the stone walls, meaning it's just going to be going to Castle Age. And then, you know, the strategy starts from there. And uh, we have a question from the chat, actually, real quick. Did you have the same build as the one on your Patreon? It, it was not the same build. Um, this The Patreon build is a FC Boom build. This is an FC Monk Rush build for me that we'll see in a second. So it's not the same build. Um, but it, it does start out similar because, like I said, it's an FC. Because of the stone walls, can't really do much in Feudal Age. Burgundians are known for their insane economy on Arena. They basically auto-win against most civilizations unless you do something and you force them to make some mistakes. So like, uh, you know, a double bit axe already in. It comes in at cheaper as well. He's going to pick up Bosaw in Feudal Age, gets his farm upgrades earlier, wheelbar hand carter cheaper. Like, everything economy for Burgundians is amazing. And then as far as like like have and fighting for relics, they get cheaper like have tap tech and cheaper husbandry tech. And on top of that, if they get relics, the relics give food and gold. It's insane how good the Burgundians are. And I hope at some point my editor can throw up some of the bonuses of Burgundians on the, on the, on the field, on the field, on the screen, so you guys can see them for yourselves. But okay, that's Burgundians. What, what about Aztecs? Why would one go for Aztecs? Now, Aztecs are a pretty solid arena civ. In fact, they used to be like number one. We're talking like six, seven years ago. Since then, the meta shifted. And Aztecs, because they don't have access to Light Cav, sometimes get outmaneuvered in the fight for Relics. However, their biggest strength, in my opinion, is the extra HP on the Monks. And not only that, but you also get um, some Eagle Warriors as, you know, a, a small, um, I guess, a small advantage over Light Cav players, even though Light Cav are considered better. Eagle Warriors still have some, you know, place in the game being pretty cheap on food. And, uh, you know, if you have the gold for it, it can be pretty solid. Aztec relics generate a bit more gold. And so if you can see from the Aztec bonuses, it revolves around monks, gold, and, you know, snowballing that advantage. That's pretty much what Aztecs want to do in most of their game. Uh, most of their games. Uh, it is worth mentioning as well, as we're just obviously getting started here, Devotion is a new tech. This is the first big tournament with Devotion being played. And Devotion makes it like, it's a mini faith. It makes it harder for your units to get converted. And so if Tato is planning up against my Monk Rush, I think Devotion would be a, an insane option to shut that down. And obviously, spoiler alert, I do go for a Monk Rush this game. And you can see by the build, 23 pop uh, going straight for Market Blacksmith here. And I actually practiced this build right before the game. So I, I went in and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And um, it, it works out. I would say it works out pretty well for, for the, the start of it. So... The idea is you click up the castle age, we're going to sell our stone, so we're not going to have any options for adding in town centers. And town centers are obviously really good at developing economy. They secure you, you know, resources, they let you produce more villagers. It's like 
Going for town centers is super natural. So the fact that I'm cutting out on town centers, I'm putting myself at a big disadvantage. But it does have some pros to it. By cutting out town centers, I'm not investing my resources onto villagers, thus increasing my economy long term. But in the short term, I actually have more resources to spend onto military and to spend on something very key, which is Imperial Age. And that's my long term plan is to get a fast Imperial Age on one town center. Let's take a look at what Tato's doing before we talk about my short term plan. Tato is going to go for a very standard approach. He's obviously upping way later than me, not because he's making a mistake, just because the stable takes a lot of resources. He also got double bid axe. Uh, he got horse collar. So these things, they take your resources and he needs to go 26 pop to be able to justify going for a fast castle under these circumstances. So naturally, he's later than me to castle age, but he will have a better economy. And especially with the Burgundians, he's going to pick up Bosaw rather quickly. He had double bid axe cooking. Uh, take a look at the res collected. I'm already down 350 or 400 res. So it's not really a good sign or like already. And this is what I'm talking about with Burgundians. They're basically in auto win civ if nothing bad happens. Against most civs. So some civs like Malay can keep up. Uh, you know, certain civilizations can force things like, you know, Bohemians and Aztecs. But if nothing goes wrong, Burgundians tend to really... Uh, really push ahead. Okay, now let's talk about my short-term plan. So obviously, I, I'm thinking about fast imp long-term since I sold my stone. My short-term plan, though, is I want to take all five relics. Think of that. If I can take the relics, I deny them for Burgundians, and I take them. Aztec relics are solid. Extra gold. Can't go wrong with that. Relics in general are sick. So I send two bills. I pick up loom so I don't get them sniped. And I'm going to go two monasteries in the center of the, of the map, and that helps me pick up the relics. This is a really important part of the game. I could have made these monasteries at home, but then I'm running monks from home all the way to relics, giving my opponent more time to snipe them with light cap. Uh, got a nice little hit there on the scout. By putting them in the center, I secure myself one relic right away, and I split the map in two. Now Tato can't run from one side to the other. If he does that, he's going to run through my monks, and I might get some conversions. If I had them at home, then he has the whole map. He can run around freely and have zero vision, zero protection. So by making the monasteries in the middle, I split the map in half, which gives the monk player a little bit more versatility and a little bit more defense. So in this case, a riskier forward position is actually safer for my monks. A few spearmen on the field, of course, because I have to defend my monks. They're so fragile. Look at the light cap. Oh, scouts for now already on the field. Uh, and Tato is obviously seeing exactly what I'm doing. He knows about it. But I don't mind. I send one bill back. My economy back home. A few farms, but pretty much everything on gold. And I'm going to be stockpiling for Monks and Imperial Age. Tato, simple, basic, standard game. Three town centers, nothing crazy about it. And that's the 100% correct decision. Three TCs, gets the Monastery, and has the Light Cap to snipe my Monks. This is a good game for Tato. And really nothing bad is happening. We both, to be honest, are doing exactly what we want right now. I'm going for the Relics. I'm staying on one TC. He is trying to deny me the Relics with Light Cap. And he's going 3TC. And if he's lucky, he might snag one or two relics. And yeah, he has a few actually really close to his base. So he might succeed at that. Oh, that was a big moment. I was really upset about that, actually. Lost the monk and I got denied my relic. It's a good play from Tato here. Tried to go for a little cheeky trap there. But nothing quite happened from it, I don't I don't think. Yeah, so I ended up just losing a monk for free. That's on me, though. I should have waited till I had two, three monks with Sanctity before moving out. So, a bit greedy there for me. A bit, uh, you know, over-anxious. I wanted to get the relics fast. Ended up losing a monk for free. Now we see Tato using the light cap to get control of the map. And so far, it's nothing too exciting. Because it is arena, it's a slower paced start. But it's leading up to a guaranteed exciting game. Because just the nature of it, me being on still one town center... I can't catch up in economy, so I'm going to have to go for some degenerate all-in push. And it's going to be up to Tato to hold it. And if you recall, guys, especially my YouTube watchers, you guys might have seen a video titled, like, Best Arena Game I've Ever Played. And it was Tato doing something similar with the monks. And I was Burgundians, and I was defending it. And it was a really crazy game. Highly recommend you check that out on YouTube if you haven't already. But this feels like the reverse of it, where I'm the guy doing the push, and Tato is on Burgundians. Uh, going for relics. Also, just a little disclaimer here at this point. I consider Tato to be the best arena player. E even after this game. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, he won Masters Arena. And I think he has the most experience. And the most versatile gameplay uh, on arena. So, 
like I, I I do think he's like super super solid player on arena and I knew going into this that it's gonna be a tough game he does a good job he snags two relics has the light cap guarding the third relic so it's two for me and two for Tato and I just saw a spider running on the wall which is really strange we never really have spiders okay um and now I'm gonna go for a siege workshop and a ram the reason behind this ram is I want to break the walls and push into his base to put some fake pressure in Castleage. But my actual game plan is to go up to Imperialage, and I'm going to go to Stone, drop a forward castle. That is what I want to do. So this ram is kind of just fake pressure in Castleage. Now, this is where I make a crucial mistake. And Tato, he punishes me like a boss, to be honest. He goes for the second stable. I didn't expect this at all. Because in my position, when I was on this situation with Burgundians, I went for fast and as fast as possible, just to match the Imperial time of my opponent. But Tato goes for all in Castleage, picks up the Devotion tech we talked about, making it harder for me to convert his already hard to convert Light Cav. Then he's going to go second stable, doubling down on the Light Cav, and also has a few monks that were picking up relics that can help out in the fight. So he's going to go for all in Castleage and try to clear me up before Imperial Age is even on the cards. For me, I just clicked up the Imperial Age. Had I known all in castle was coming, you bet your ass I'm going home with these guys. I'm going home. I'm picking up pikemen. I'm I'm camping. I'm just waiting. But of course, because it's arena, I don't know what my opponent's doing. And I didn't expect Tato to be going for full light calf play to clear me up. Obviously, I'm not stupid. I was cautious. I was worried. You know, this could be bad. I may be overstepping. I'm up to imp. Let, let's go back. So I wasn't you know, completely playing into it. But Tato strikes. Actually, there's some nice quick ball here, potentially, you know, blocking the light cap a little bit. But because Devotion's in, it takes me forever to get some conversions. I land three out of five, which is actually very reasonable. And my spears are getting decent hits. Remember, no bloodlines for Burgundians. But in the end, despite all that, which is a decent engagement, Tato clears me up completely. Missing Pikeman there was huge. I could have used two, three extra spears, maybe two, three extra monks as well. And I didn't have them. Actually, I had three monks here, so maybe I did have them. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. But at this point, there's nothing that I can do to get back to control of the map. Like, Tato has full light cap. Uh, he won the fight. And he did that just by massing two stable light cap. And now he's in a transition to Imperial Age himself. So I'm in a situation now where I'm up to Imp and I lost my position. I'm down 30 bills. I thought I was dead. Like, I, I would have resigned if this was a rated game. It's looking super grim because it's a tournament and if I lose this, I lose the set. I was like, let's just continue trying. Like, I, it's my right to try as a player. Let's just see what happens. And so I decided, okay, I need to get control of the map. I need that for sure. So I go for three barracks. I go for pikemen. I wouldn't have needed three barracks if I kept my mass alive. One barracks is enough. But since I lost my mass and I have to re-get them up, I go three barracks. See him a castle in the center. He's going to take my relics. I hate that. I'm so mad. No, don't take my relics. I worked so hard for them. So I go castle here and I want to treb him down since I'm up to imp. In hindsight, maybe Tato should have made this castle in the back. Not went for my relics. And just let me have the relics and keep the castle safe. Maybe. But he decides to go here. He wants to take control of my relics, which is a fair approach as well. Because taking the relics with the Burgundians is a really good thing. Now we have a castle going up. So I have, you know, potentially trebs in the way. Imperial Age tax coming in for the monks. I decide to free my monks because I want to use the Imperial tax and I'm losing my monasteries. And I land two conversions despite devotion. So that's pretty good. Uh, I'm able to save some monks and I'm going to go for some trebs. So I have what I want, but it's like delayed. I wanted the castle forward and I wanted to have like an extra five monks and an extra ten pikemen. Obviously, things happen. I don't have that now. So I have to settle for a castle at home and a much smaller army. But it's still the comp I was going for. So it still feels somewhat natural. I go ahead and I snipe his ram. I think that spearman gets deleted here or not. Oh, I just get it. Free spear. Can't go wrong with that. And my traps start to roll out. Tato, of course, recognizes that I'm all in pushing. And he's going to try to hang on to this castle with some repairs. And he also picks up Fortified Wall. So him up to Imp, Fortify Wall, he's playing it like pretty much perfectly as far as like what he needs to do. He just needs to buy time, stall. He's up 40 bills and he has five relics. I mean, this is like 
the dream scenario with Burgundians. It doesn't get better than that. But what do I have? I have some momentum. That's all I have at the moment. I have a momentum and, and a good composition. You know, monks and pikes are solid. But as far as economy, take a glance, guys. Uh, take a gander at my uh, my situation. Uh, looking rough, to say the least. And at this point, I thought about adding in more town centers, but I, I just felt like I needed a push. I needed a forward castle. Because if I don't kill his farms, then it, even if I add economy, I'm never going to catch up. He's got five relics. So I go 100% for it. Uh, wait, I just I just noticed there's a Viper donation. He said, you're absolutely the best looking streamer on Twitch. How do I get my face to look like yours? <laughs> who's who's donating with the Viper as the name? I'm not lying, by the way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that donation. There we go. You are absolutely the best looking streamer in Twitch. How do I get my face to look like yours? Thank you, Viper. Excellent question, by the way. Oh, sorry. I hid my face. I hid my face. Excellent question, Viper. And thank you for the $10 donation. Real donation. That was from Viper himself. I don't want to reveal my secrets, though. Sorry, man. Uh, okay. At this point, back to the game here. Sorry, I caught my eye. I, I couldn't help myself. Um, that went straight to the ego. I'm kidding. Uh, okay, back to the game for real. Faith coming in for Viper. Uh, for, forget Viper. Get him out of my head. Viper's off. Off. Tato's in. Faith coming in for Tato. And he's going to go for some crazy play here. He's going to go for... Two petards, sneak attack, break my walls, and send in the light calf. In my economy, it's already looking extremely shabby. I do not need raiding happening in my economy. And I had no idea. This is my perspective. I had no idea. This guy was going out here. I don't even know why. Who sent this guy? But he randomly uh, spots the, the attack. But obviously, I wasn't even looking here. So uh, at this point, I see it. But there's nothing I can do to stop it. Uh, maybe I, th I thought about quick walling, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not that good. Uh, don't think I can quick wall this in time. No fills there. So, oh, my, okay. Shit, we lost, I guess. <laughs> and I said, okay, his army is there. Uh, my economy is dead. Let's let's just go in fast. Let's just see what I can do. Let's go in fast because I'm at like completely out of time. At this point, like, I was like 1% away from defeat. If I had to resign, I wouldn't even be mad. Like, I know I'm dead. But I just like, okay, let's just try one, one last thing. Go in, make my forward castle. This is what I wanted all game. Let's just try it. Send in my traps. I have five traps. Maybe I can snowball it. Back home. Terrible. I can't even produce pikemen. It's a tragedy. <laughs> I have no res whatsoever. And like the few pikemen I have are just dying to light calves. So it, this is like, I just run my bills, a garrison, no protection, and I'm all in for the center. Meanwhile, we take a big fight. He has faith, so it's hard to convert him. But no heresy for Burgundians, which is why I like monk crushing them. And I got some decent conversions on some hand cannon here. I got my trebs going, and I'm like, okay, okay. I'm down at 1k, 1k2 score, down 40 vils and 5 relics, but I have my push. I'm in my opponent's base, but like 4 trebs now? Where's the 5th? I think I lost 1. But 4 trebs? That's pretty solid. Like, that's hard to hold. And I have some decent units that I converted, like a couple light caps, some hand cannon here to prevent some expansions. I felt pretty good at that. Back home, I tried clearing him up with some pikemen, some baiting him into the TC, but uh, again, resources are looking terrible. I can't afford a mining camp. I don't even look back. Like, this is literally terrible. I, I don't think I've ever been down this bad at an arena game, actually. That I won, obviously. Arena game that I lost, I've been down extremely bad. Um, damn, I just spoiled the game, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, I think people know what happened at this point, if they're watching. But I mean, um, the push is going really solid but the situation around the push is not great tato he's trying to survive at this point three tc trying to hold on and it's a it's a game of space right now because i'm taking away space from him more so than anything and even though he's got more bills take a look at the efficiency i mean i'm at 17 percent but he's at 50 percent it's not looking too good for him and so my my momentum that i had I'm not using to take away the space for him, make it awkward for him to maneuver with his villagers, keep them working. And I snipe the castle, now I'm going to go for town centers. The production buildings are within the range of the castle, so that's not too good for him either. So as far as the push, it's looking decent. I even get some really good value with this hand cannon here, by the way. Really good play for me. Probably the first, like, super solid read of the situation for myself. The decision making was kind of questionable well and i played pretty well but tato just outplayed me but this is the first move where i felt like okay that was solid preventing the expansion there is so key killing the monk was key as well and now i'm just trying to pick up conversions because I, I have no economy i can't make units so i just make monks everything on gold 31 on gold make monks and i get my units by taking his 
And Hado's biggest mistake here was giving me units. He had to delete those. Now I have three hand cannon here. That's huge. Even though his army is like way bigger than mine, it's hard to approach my army because I have just monks, right? It's like if you're attacking into monks, it's never really going to be too good. And with the castle, it's hard for him to like maneuver around. So even though he's got a good army, it's just unclear how he approaches this. He approaches me, I get four or five conversions, and I just leave. In this case, I might lose my monk, but I mean, it's still worth it. I killed two hand cannoneers, so that's a, that's a worth a trade. Okay, Tato goes for what might be considered the blunder of the game for him. He has a big army and he goes for a counterattack. Tato, he's going to go rob a homeless guy. Basically, I, I have nothing. And he's coming to attack my base. Obviously, I rewalled it, so he has to work for it. This was, I think, the only crucial mistake. Keeping that army at home, collecting the five relics, would have been probably a game-winning move or the, the best play. But he instead decides to hit where it doesn't hurt anymore. I'm numb. Uh, you you want to take my money? I have 15 cents. Take it all. That's what I'm thinking right now. I don't know he's counterattacking. Now I see it. So now I'm like, okay. Same mentality as before. He wants to attack me. All his army's there. Let's go fast with the push. And I, I want to target the relics. He's sagging them back. So he's playing really well himself. And let's expand elsewhere. So at this point, I, I know I can't even hold this. So I have to run all my builds. Uh, and I have to look for a life outside of my walls. So closer to his base. I'm, again, I'm targeting mainly gold because I want to make some monks. And the hand cannoneer that I converted, they're getting so much value. I can't stress that enough. And I continue trying to convert hand cannoneer because hand cannoneer are an insane unit. Like having some of those is fantastic. Meanwhile, Tato's expanding to the right. He's taking more and more space on the right side because it's hard for me to attack this area. My My... My units move so slowly. And then meanwhile, he's killing, like I said, an empty base. He's hitting a graveyard here. Uh, but again, like, he didn't really know what I had. So it's understandable that he goes for a counterattack. I could have been rebooming, and he didn't really know that. So it wasn't like such a bad mistake, but like in hindsight, it obviously was a mistake. And now he starts to get a little bit desperate because he's running out of space. Um, and he's just trying to run out. But I don't want to let him leave at all. So I'm going to try to prevent him from doing that constantly converting him while squeezing him out and taking back the relics that is my main goal again two more hand cannon near to me very happy with that those are going to kill some bills so the situation is actually getting better and better for me because although my economy oh it's at 50 percent now worker efficiency although my economy hasn't gotten better my position in his base has gotten a lot better and you know if we consider him rebooming that's really bad for me, obviously, if he gets like a big reboom off. But, you know, he's still losing quite a bit here. Now he's going to go for a big, big play with the Vils, which I consider another mistake. These Vils should have ran to the top. He has so much wood and stone. Make four TCs here and, and just continue booming. But monks, guys, they play with your emotions. They play with your brain. He decides to attack my traps. <laughs> but who said Flemish Revolution was dead? Who said it? 50 Vils? This is not, this is not a hard... Uh, sorry, this is not an easy army to stop here. But I decided to pull back. That monk survived on 1 HP, and I'm just hitting him with hand cannon here and trying to get conversions on his hand cannons. And I keep my traps alive, so this feels really good for me now. I'm killing quite a lot of bills. And I'm actually converting bills, which helped me, like, develop my economy. But in come the hand cannon here from the right side. This is a huge play from him. Potentially killing off some of my monks. Winning back the space. And he got a lot of value from bringing those guys back. But I just continue going. I'm trapping him down. It is worth mentioning at this point as he runs down to the side. So he, he lost like 20 bills. Should have probably just ran from the start. It is worth mentioning. Um, I can't convert buildings like I used to. If I convert a building with a monk, I can still convert it. But I can't do the, like, the switch from building to units and get an instant conversion like before. That doesn't work anymore. So if I convert buildings, he would just snipe me with light cap. So... Like two patches ago, this monk rush would be way stronger. But now it's like way, way, way weaker and it's it's kind of nerfed. But, you know, it's still decent. I just have to use my traps to kill all his buildings, which is, uh, you know, a lot, a lot harder. Again, as you can see, it's just monks for me trying to get conversions. Hand cannon are my main target. Hand cannons obviously kill light cap. He's going for some really nice expansions. And again, part of the mistake from Tato is like, he just didn't spend his wood. He just needs to go like mass farms on this side. Completely concede his main base. 
and then create a secondary base right away. But it took him too long to set up the farms. He's getting it down now. If those farms were set up like four minutes ago, I think he would have been in a great position. But again, it's understandable because he was trying to hang on to the relics mo mostly, right? More monk action, monk hen cannon near action. I get greedy, I try to go for the bomber cannon. It's a little bit of a mistake there for me. And I decided to go back with the trebs. So he's still holding on. Meanwhile, I'm expanding on the left. And at this point, like the casters are going crazy because like I think it was dash and viper casting. This is like one of the most insane arena games you could ever see. The score is closing in. And it's still unclear who's winning because although I got two relics, he still has three. He still has a much better economy, even though I have maybe a better grip of his base. So it's still so close as to who can win this. Now we see the hand near Again, he's desperate to sneak out. He wants to get away and he wants to, you know, harass my expansion. And I don't want him to run away. I want to keep him in one area. Oh, he does snipe actually a trap. So that was definitely worth it for that cannon. Meanwhile, I'm also getting some raids on the right side with my monks, getting some hand near picks. And just kind of delaying his expansion as much as possible. I lost a lot of bills here. I didn't really notice this. I didn't think I lost so many bills. Oh, that's brutal. Good raid from him then. Five five or so dead bills. And now I have to go deal with that because I can't I can't afford these hand cannons just running around. They're gonna idle all my economy. My 45 bills will be idled. Can't let that happen. So I go try to get some conversions. And meanwhile, the traps can continue pushing into his base. And here we have a little bit of a highlight. I'm on 140 hertz, so I can actually quick wall for my life. And okay, okay, we get some we get some decent quick walls down. I'm clicking and he goes for the mass delete so he doesn't get converted. That was a really cool moment. Uh still he's in the driver's seat though. He's at 40 bills and his expansion is now ramping up. He's got uh three stables as well, so some light cab. Doesn't have the bank of wood he had before, but at least he has, you know, a decent amount of um, you know, economy and farms. I go for the, the push sins. I still want the relics. I'm, I'm kind of a relic fiend because five relics with Aztec monks would be insane. And these monks have 70 HP, guys. They're really strong. They don't really die to light cav. Obviously, Aztec monks can now go up to 100 HP if I get devotion and all the attacks, but it's unreasonable to expect that. I don't have that much uh, economy in the bank. At least just some stone and some gold. But because I'm mining so many minerals... I feel like I have the luxury of just, like, controlling the game by spending all of my gold and stone. Which gets more value in the short run than gold, if that makes sense. So obviously in the long run, when gold runs out, it's a tragedy. But while I have it, gold is better than food wood. Especially with monks and castles, for example. So I don't have the relics now, but at some point I do pick up all five relics. And he's going to try to stop me with some light cap. But at this point, he's basically gave, you know, given, ah, given. At this point, he's basically given up hope of securing the main base. And this is just one last desperate attempt. But his main focus is on the top. And he does a really good play. He distracts me on the bottom. Goes for the attack on top. And I think it's still an okay trade. I get five or six conversions. Again, the reason I'm able to convert light cap with faith is because the Aztec monks have so much HP. Look at this. He closes the gap, but I still can convert him because my monk doesn't die. Aztec monks, guys. Now I go for a castle. Looking to continue the pressure. I'm always down 30 bills. But hey, I'm converting some bills here. Oh, I hit these. Oh, I hit those. Let's go. And now the monks just don't die. I just heal, convert, and it's just such a nightmare. I, at this point, I think I heard Tato cursing in Spanish, by the way. I, I think he... He was whispering some, some Spanish to himself. Because um, I don't play with too much volume. Uh, I think he said some swear words. You have to ask him, though. He was definitely like, clearly frustrated. I, I don't blame him at all as well. Like I, I would have started swe swearing in Spanish, bro. <laughs> I, I don't even speak Spanish too well. And I, I'd start swearing in Spanish at this point. So obviously, he, he was definitely frustrated. Um, not, I don't think he was frustrated with like losing. I think he was frustrated with like the situation. Like It's just... It's, it's just AIDS dealing with the monks, let's be honest here. Uh, you know, people complain about them for a reason. And, uh, you know, probably just felt like he, he's threw, thrown a, a basically guaranteed one game. But it's not over yet. I think and now, for the first time, I'm winning the game. For the first time, it looks like I'm winning because I have a good economy. And I have, you know, 
good access to minerals. I have five relics, which I should have put at the back, by the way. But I'm stupid. I put it right here. So for the first time, I'd say I'm winning. But it's still pretty close because he's still got a decent economy. He still has the light cap with faith. Anything can happen. And he actually takes out my castle. I can't repair it anymore. I ran out of stone. Uh, didn't have a mining cap, so yeah, that was a pretty big problem. Also, those forehand cannoneers should have went to the right, by the way. I think he forgot about those. That was a pretty big deal. Now we see a little bit of a treb war. I'm going to kill his castle, but then he's got four trebs, which are hard to kill. Like uh, Monks really can't kill trebs. You have to close the gap to convert them. Pikes are also pretty bad, and hand cannon is not great against trebs, so... Uh, at this point, I still thought, like, the score switch, I still, still thought I can actually lose. I mean, I, I thought I was losing even even after I killed the castle, for the record. Uh, when, when he resigned, when he said GG, which is going to be in a bit, a few minutes, I was, like, really close to calling GG myself. Uh, which sounds really weird, I know, but you'll see the situation. You'll see why I thought that. Uh, obviously, I don't have the information that you guys have when watching. Uh, population is really close. Castle goes down. He invested a lot into that, so now... His economy is looking pretty bad. Like, he still has some farms and some gold, but overall, it's pretty bad. I lose a treb, though, and he has four trebs now. So, you know, it's not looking that great for me either. I still continue what, I'm, what I've been doing, but now I have to watch out because he's got hand cannons and light cap at the back of my base. So, my reboom is actually kind of delayed at this point. Uh, obviously, the game is super intense. And although he lost his castle, he still has a few town centers. Th those are my next targets. If I kill all his town centers, his bills can't work efficiently. I can raid them. Yeah, killing town centers here is huge. And so I definitely have to go for those. And Burgundians do have Hassar, by the way. It is worth mentioning. He could have teched into Hassar. And I think that would have been a great choice. Because Hassar is... Like, Lightcap is his best unit. And getting Hassar is a nice upgrade. So I'm not sure why he didn't go for Hassar. Could have also went for, like, forging and stuff. Well, he got only forging now, but... Actually, no, I got foraging. He didn't get foraging. Anyways, I'm going to continue putting pressure here on his town centers. I'm going to continue expanding in his base for some reason. I don't even know why. But this is a huge play from Tato now. Obviously, the game is wide open. Look at the minimap. Like, what is even happening here? And he sends his four traps to kill my castle and my monastery with five relics. And at this point, I'm panicking. I'm like, oh my god. And so, as always, whenever I see my opponent has his army somewhere else, I go hard. So I'm under his TC here. I'm diving him. I'm chasing the hand cannoneer. I'm chasing him so hard. But at the same time, I leave my traps exposed. And now he attacks there. While raiding here, the game is crazy. Like, one of the craziest games I've ever played. He sends his traps forward to now snipe my town centers. He's going to take back the relics. I am stressing. I'm, I'm like, I need to find some good damage here. And it felt like I wasn't enough at some point as well. Because, like, I killed Vils. I killed TCs, but Vils ran. He had still some ranges. He had still some solid economy. And so I knew I needed to A, kill the TCs fast, and B, get con you know get some conversions on the hand cannoneer. And as you can see, he kept getting some decent snipes with the light cav. Uh, but now I get some decent you know conversions here. Now my army is solid. His Vils are in a bit of question. And the pop, I didn't know this at the time, but the pop switched big time. I'm now at 110. He's at 74. So in hindsight here, I'm clearly winning. And I go for the trap snipe with some bills as well, since he left them exposed. As you can see, it's uh, it's a disaster everywhere. But while I was playing this, I felt like I was at a pretty like weird situation, because I lost the relics, and I didn't know how much economy he still had at the back, and how much he was running. So it didn't, like, I felt like I was winning at this point, but it didn't feel that far ahead for me, even still, because of the relics. I mean, look at my economy. I have a lot of pop, but like, they're barely working. I'm only now starting to truly develop my economy and getting some farms down. I continue what I've been doing. Monks, light cap, anything. Just trying to fight. I'm trying to fight 24-7 because the more fights we have, the better it is for me, the monk player. Um, because I'm trying to get conversions, which is like basically how I create units. I don't create units by making them. I create units by fighting. Uh, so I want to fight as much as possible. He wants to fight as little as possible. Now he just has like no more TCs, just some Vils, and yeah. Now, now that I'm looking at it, it was actually a clear win for me at this point. But like I said, when I was actually in the game, it didn't feel so convincing. And at this point, we see the GG well played. 
And uh, I sent the GG well played back to him because this was just a crazy, crazy game. And uh, probably one of the best games I've ever played in a tournament. And not not because I played really well, just because it was such a, a crazy, exciting game. And the casters were going crazy. After the set, Nilly told me it was the best best of five I've ever watched, like hands down. Uh, players were obviously like cheering both me and Tato for such an amazing set. So a big shout out to them for like just being cool about the situation and and kind of like adding to the epicness of the moment. Tato, of course, was uh, frustrated that he lost, but he, you know, definitely enjoyed, I guess, the moment as much as he could have. And uh, obviously, it's just such an insane situation. And I didn't expect to come back uh, in this game. And it was one of those like 1% chance. And this is why Mr. Yo and ACCM never resigned. Because if you can win a game like this, and it makes a difference between getting to the semifinals and having to fight in the next round, that's, that's enough reason to continue playing on. GG well played. This goes down as probably the best arena game. The new best arena game of all time. And we take a look at the resources. He still has 15,000 more res collected. At some point, he had 20k more. And the power of the monks, even though they've been nerfed, they still are pretty damn strong. Um, and as you can see, like, take a look at the uh, economy tab, military tab. He still has better ratio. Like... Everything stat-wise was in his favor, but Monks really changed the game, and we saw Monks pull back a victory, uh, basically out of thin air. In hindsight, this is a big throw from Tato. Talked about many mistakes. He attributes the loss mainly to the second counterattack with the hand in near. He said if he kept that at home, he'd probably win. And I think there's a few other mistakes, like sending the Vils to rush. Should have just sent him to the side. So definitely a big throw, but sometimes that happens when uh, you know when things are crazy and. And you don't really know what's happening. So, thanks, so thank you so much for watching. More reviews coming to YouTube from NEC5. I have two more of the best NEC5 games. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.